In this video, we are going to talk about a special tab in our AI standard surface material called as transmission. Now, um, before we go into uh, a transmission, uh, I want us to understand how Arnold understands the idea of transparency. Firstly, there are two terminologies that I want us to differentiate between. There is transmission meaning that the surface actually allow, allows light to pass through. A good example of this would be glass. Glass actually transmits light, which means it allows light to go through it. This is significantly different from what we see in the geometry tab here called as opacity. Opacity is uh, when, uh, um, when you have to attach something like a map. Um, a good example of this would be if you're trying to go into um, making leaves or foliage, you basically end up using uh, this sort of an opacity map. Now remember, if you're uh, if you're looking at these darker areas, uh, this is not a transmissive surface. This is an area that you simply want to exclude or cut out from the plane that you're making. So this is not a trans, uh, transmissive area. This is the opacity uh, of an object. So I want us to distinguish between opacity versus the property of a material to let light through, which is transmission. Okay, so what that means is if you're trying to attach a transparency or an opacity map, then that once again uh, goes in here into the geometry tab this little section called as opacity this is where we need to attach that map we won't be discussing that here right now we are interested in looking at transmission so once again you see that the transmission weight is set to zero which means this object is perfectly um, uh, I want to use the word opaque but really what it means is that it's not letting light through okay as soon as I start increasing that weight you see that the object starts becoming more and more transparent. Now, <clears throat> I'll let this render finish, uh, but while that's happening, let me tell you a little bit about how Arnold um, functions behind the scenes. Now, Arnold is what we like to call as a really fast renderer. It does a really, really fast job of rendering objects, but that is particularly happening because it's making certain assumptions. And one of the biggest assumptions it makes is that every object is um, is opaque. Every object is not letting light through. So when you start operating things like transmission, it's important for us to tell Maya or tell Arnold that, hey, listen, this object is not opaque. So make sure that you spend extra time rendering this. That's kind of what we're trying to tell. Okay, so to make that happen, we are going to select the sphere, which we have here already. We are going to go into the shape node of it, and in the Arnold tab, you should have an object here, uh, uh, an attribute here called as opaque. I'm going to check it off. Let me save a snapshot of this, and I'm going to switch off opaque and let it render out. And you'll see a significant difference in terms of how the the shadows particularly play out when you switch off the opaque tab. So um, remember when you work with transmission you need to go into the shape node of the object that you're working with, select the object, go into the shape node, go to Arnold and switch off opaque, which is on by default. You also need to do exactly that when you're attaching an opacity map. I'm gonna let this uh, finish rendering so we can actually compare the differences between what we have. So here is uh, one with uh, opaque checked, and here is the one with opaque checked off. I understand that the object doesn't look completely um, um, the way we really want it to look. We'll get there in a second, but uh, you should be able to see that there's a significant difference between this and this, and I think the differences are get, I mean, we are heading in the right direction with what we really want from the render. Okay, so just keep here, keep this render here to the left. Let's go back into the sphere. Let's go ahead and make this completely transmissive. 
Neat. Can you see that I'm not able to see the renders out here? That's because I'm in the snapshot mode or the snapshot display mode. Just click on it again. So I'm now working the scene and now I should be able to see what's going on in here. Now right now this is uh, rendering my sphere as a big, thick, completely full cr crystal uh, ball. That's really what it's rendering as. So there is some refraction happening in the back by default. Because this is completely solid, that refraction is incredibly huge. So why, and that's, that's the reason why I'm not able to see that sphere in the back. Uh, so let me reduce that uh, specular roughness. Did you see that? Specular roughness. As soon as I increase it now, it's sort of making things look a little more, um, uh, this is the word is grainy. That's what my specular roughness is doing. So I'm going to cut that completely, take that out of the picture. And now uh, this is what my crystal ball kind of looks like. All right. Let's work this a little bit. First off, uh, remember specular tab had this attribute in here called as index of refraction or IOR. I want you to see what happens when that goes to 1.0. You see that the object is almost completely invisible. It's like air. So index of refraction is, uh, or rather refraction is a property of light by which it uh, light bends when it passes from two different materials that are made out of different density. Um, and that's why when you put a straw inside a glass full of water and you look at it from outside, it almost feels like the straw bends inside the water. Okay, now um, when I set my IOR or index of refraction to one, um, it means that the density of this, uh, this ball is the same as air which means that uh, the two um, materials of the air and, and the glass are made out of uh, the same density. And that's why there is no distortion that we see in the back. Uh, I'm going to increase that IOR just a tad bit. And you should be able to see a little bit of distortion already. And as I keep going, well, that's too much. Zero, seven, let's say. you see that the distortion starts to increase as I bring up the IOR. Remember, currently it's treating this particular ball as a thick, solid ball, which means that it's full of glass on the inside. If you wanted that ball to be sort of like a hollow ball, then go down here, scroll down to um, geometry, make sure you check thin wall. And when you change it to thin wall, remember the distortion is going to be a little less. Now I can change this to 1.5, which is the IOR of glass. I'm going to do a few funky things. I'm going to uh, check off thin walled. I'm going to keep my IOR to 1.5 and this time I'm going to change my color to say something like yellow. Now what that is doing really, this is really impressive and this is something that I would like to talk about. Is that no matter what light, especially if it's white light, white light that is actually, uh, this, is, this is magic in a way. White light from the bag has been cast into this ball. And as it traverses through the ball, because the ball is allowing for transmission of light, it emerges at yellow as yellow light. Not only is it appearing yellow to you, it's also casting that yellow light on objects that are nearby, which is pretty awesome. So there's a bit of bounce light. There's some indirect lighting that's happening, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, so this is this is just magic, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, just bring that back to uh, actually let's as I said we're gonna try, uh, try a few funky things out let's try roughness and see what happens 
see if I start increasing the roughness of it. Once again, there's a certain amount of roughness, there's a certain amount of diffuse uh, fuzziness to uh, the light that's being transmitted. Remember, you're specifically hitting the transmission bit here. Is rendering pretty well. So, um, so that's transmission. In short, I'm going to cut that out right now. So the ball isn't transmitting at all. I'm going to discuss at least one more tab here called as emission. As um, the term suggests, what this tab allows you to do is it allows for my surface to emit light. So if I wanted to change the weight very slowly, right now it's set to zero. I can I can start bringing it up, and you see what's happening is that my my ball is starting to glow. It's going to go towards white as I go all the way up. It's kind of like a bulb, which is nice. I can change the color on it as well. I can change it to blue. The reason why we are seeing purple. Uh, and not absolute um, blue is because remember the the object in itself is is it's red in color. So if I was to change that to red, and you can as you can see, there's a significant amount of like um, uh, indirect lighting, obviously. So this surface is actually emitting light, and that light is interacting with the surfaces around it, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so this can be used to create things like um, you know Christmas lights and bulbs that are sitting far away and um, if you're going to be sort of modeling a, a bulb close up then maybe the tungsten wire on the inside can have an emissive material. So those were our transmissive and emissive tabs in our AI standard surface.